Hello, everyone. How's everybody today? I can see Twanda. And Ro. You're in the same, they're still with you? Perfect. Yes, they are. There, you see Barry as well. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hovering. So anyway. We'll wait for a few minutes. Uh, yes. For others to join in. But uh, for those joining us on Facebook Live, Welcome. We're always like, hello. <laughs> so again, this is um, August 2 today. And uh, the name of our simple cooking show where we only use seven ingredients of less is seven with Chad and Marvin. Marvin. Yeah. So um, the dishes, what is the, oh, actually only one dish. The dish that we're preparing today if you will notice, it's almost like a continuation of what we prepared last week, our scampi, because the ingredients are pretty much identical, okay? And I did that intentionally so that T, we can have like more ideas of how we can create more dishes with the same ingredients, right? That's what we're trying to do, okay? So you don't have to keep buying new ingredients every time. <laughs> you can have what's already, can you reuse, we can use what we already have in our country, okay, in our kitchens. So as always, today we are going to actually start with our cake tea and everyone else who's cooking with us, we're starting with our cake. Why? Because it requires a longer cooking or baking time than the salmon. Ready? Okay, and I see on Facebook Live, you have Bang with us. Hello, Bang. Hi, Bang. Uh, we do have a couple of um, family and friends from the Philippines who are tuning in on FB Live as well. Welcome to everyone. Please give a thumbs up, by the way, if you're on Facebook Live, because we, we can't see the participants uh, as long as it's still live. But we do see your thumbs up and we, we do see your hearts. And uh, if you say hello, <laughs> then we can uh, mention you online. So hi to mommy and daddy as well. And, Always, uh, yes. And those in Cebu, for, for those of you joining us. Hello. Yes, from Cebu, Philippines. All right, let's get started because we need um, our full hour today because of the cake, okay? Another version of a dump cake. So do we have Omika online? I want to know if we have Omika online because then I'm going to have to try to tell you what to do if you're using your traditional oven in making the black forest cake, okay? Is Amika online? Let me see. Someone is joining. Okay, somebody joined us from an unnamed iPad, so. It could be mom busy. One of our regulars <laughs> from so San Diego. If we are using the oven, um, I suggest you preheat it now to 375. Mm -hmm. If you're using a traditional oven with us today, but if you're using one of these little electrical oil skillets, then please preheat it to 350 degrees at this point, 350. Now we are making both the duck cake and the salmon on EOCs from our end, just so that we could uh, limit the number of cameras that we have. So for the salmon, I also preheated my EOC at 350, mm -hmm. okay? But I guess some of you will be using the stove top later on for the salmon, so we'll give you directions for that. But if you're using EOCs, again, 350 for both. Exactly. Okay. Now this is gonna be tricky because um, both of the things that we're making today actually requires traditionally your oven, okay? The salmon um, in this recipe is actually meant to be baked as well. So the challenge is going to be if you're baking two things, right? And you have only one oven. <laughs> now, Tawanda and Ro, because they're in the same house, are you going to use two EOCs? <laughs> yes, because you have two, right? Perfect. Perfect, you can do this alongside us completely. So here, traditional oven being preheated to 375, our EOC being preheated to 350. Mm -hmm. 
okay? The beauty of the EOC is this. While we are creating the 350, we don't necessarily need to reach the 350. So while that is being created at 350, we can start dumping our ingredients actually. Okay. Ready? Perfect. Here we go. So for our black forest dump cake, the first thing that goes in will be, so there's, there's, no, no, need, there's no need to grease, okay? No need to grease or spray anything on your EOC. But if you're doing the traditional way of baking, you're going to have to somehow grease or put a spray, spray something on the bottom inside of your pan of your baking dish. Okay, that's one big difference. So the first thing that goes in will be your pie filling. Okay, your cherry pie filling. So today we are using this uh, lucky leaf, lucky leaf <laughs> organic fruit filling topping. Okay, and it's 595 grams. It's 21 ounces, which is, um, and then we're just gonna make sure that it's evenly spread out, okay? We'll just spread it out evenly. Okay. Okay. Right after that, on top of this, can we spread it out as yes. much as we can? Okay. The next thing we're going to do after the pie filling, you're doing the same exact thing if you're using your ordinary baking dish, okay? We're going to add immediately on top of that your cherries to wind up undrained. You are not going to drain it. So you'll just put everything in straight from the can. Okay, so for our cherries, we're using dark sweet cherries. They're whole pitted cherries, 15 ounces, okay? And again, I'm just gonna spread it to make sure it evens out everything. That's a lot of cherries. Do you see that? All right. All right. So that's the second layer. The third thing will be our cake mix. And what we have to do with the cake mix is here. We're going to try to spread it out evenly on top. Side by side, T. So you're gonna to try to do this simultaneously just so they can kind of like combine, okay? Together with your nuts, either your almond nuts or your pecans, okay? Whatever it is that you're using. So we have one can of uh, half pecans. It's one cup. I'm oh, sorry, one cup, yeah. Here you go. Okay, so spread it evenly and then Marty will help spread the nuts. So. Yes, we're just gonna to try to do this simultaneously, okay? okay? So we'll spread it out evenly like last time, together with the nuts, either your pecan or your almond nuts. <laughs> We're gonna be one on top of each other. So the nuts, the amount of nuts that you're gonna use, please, depending on you, okay? It can be less than just a cup. Ooh, everything's going in nice. And, so I'm not even going to use all the full cup of pecans, because I feel like that's enough. There you go. See, all the cake mix on top. And then we're just gonna try to spread it out even more, okay? So that's your regular size box of cake. And then, do you remember last week? It's going to be the same thing. Our refrigerated cold butter. Tawanda, do you remember? How we have to cut this up in smaller pieces and spread it out on top evenly as well. The goal is for your melted butter to be able to like um, drip all over your cake mix, okay? That's the goal of that. That's why you're spreading it out on top of the cake mix evenly. So cut up your butter as small as you can, okay? Here we go. Let me show you how Chad is doing it. Um, so we are using a whole cup of butter, right? Remember, no, it's a, the instruction was to use three fourths of a cup of butter. Oh, okay. Right? Okay. Three fourths. But if you don't mind butter, honestly, you can push it to a cup. I always try to cut down. So instead of a cup, I do three fourths of a cup. Okay? But if you want to use a full cup of butter, you can do that. The goal is, as always, you spread it out in such a way where you can make sure that every single um surface of your cake mix will have some of the melted butter 
Yeah, okay, it's a little bit close, okay? Do you see this? Look, it's already starting to bubble up. Okay, I just have to, um, I'll eventually get to the entire surface, but uh, uh, the, I, the goal is to cover it up with uh, sliced butter. Mm -hmm. So you can get that crusty brown effect later, okay? All right. How's everyone doing? <laughs> Last week is also took time, right? Um, today I could have prepared this ahead of time as well, but then you know what? I thought everybody took longer doing this, so might as well do it with you all. So we're gonna do this with you with you all. Okay, Same so time. I just got done with a half cup. Now I'm moving to my one fourth cup, but I'll probably end up using actually the rest of the cup. So we're using one full cup today. You can slice everything and I'll help you put it on. Okay, perfect. Thank you. See, when it's a team, it's better, it's faster if it's a team. As always with anything. So more encouragement for the husbands out there. <laughs> to join your wives. Is that good enough or you want this? Yeah, that's fine. Just put everything because of that. All right. Look how pretty that looks with all the butter. All that butter goodness is going to go in there. <laughs> okay, so this is not going to be one of those healthier, healthier versions, okay? This is like full-blown goodness right here. Yeah. And then as soon as you're done with that with your EOC, you cover it. You cover your EOC and then you bring down your temperature to 300 degrees. Bring down the temperature to 300 degrees. Okay. And we'll put the timer on for, to wind up, 40 minutes. Put the timer on for 40 minutes. All right. Sorry, I mistakenly um, removed my temperature for some reason. Yeah, yeah, we're putting it back to 300. And I want to say hi to Cherry Allegro. Hi to hi. Alejandra, actually, Alejandra Vinatoro. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we have Eric Escobar as well. Hi, I saw your wave. Roselle, hi, thank you. You're a regular viewer of Facebook Live. We have hi. Antoinette Camuta, hello. John, my friend, my really good realtor friend out there in California, if you need to buy properties there, this is a uh, free plugging for you. Um, to um, Ian May Valisado, uh, she's my classmate from high school. Hi, thanks for joining us. And I do see mom busy already. And of course, mommy and daddy. Hello, everyone. Okay, so. Okay. The EOC is now at 300 degrees and I put up the timer to 40 minutes, okay? So if you're using the traditional oven, you may put in your baking dish that you laid down exactly as we did in the EOC and you're going to bake your dump cake in the traditional oven at 375 degrees for also 40 minutes, okay? So now here's the difference. Everybody, solid master people who owns an EOC, that's the difference. The oven will be at 375. Your EOC will be at 300. And whatever it is that your regular recipe says you cook it at, it will be the same thing with your EOC. The difference is the temperature. Our EOC is not at 375, it's at 300 degrees. Okay. Okay. And I wanna make mention now, well, our timer is at 40 minutes at about a 30 minute mark when it's 30 minutes. Okay, and there's only like 10 uh, minutes left on the clock. What we're gonna do is we're all going to open our lid. We're gonna crack it open for about um, like a, a whole inch. 
okay? About a whole inch. That's to brown the top later. Kind of like crisp it out a little more. We're not going to see it as much as we did last week when we did our blueberry because we used the yellow cake. Because this is chocolate, it's dark. We're not going to necessarily see the browning, but it will at least be a little bit like crusty, like and um, like more toasty on top. Okay. Okay. So if your EOC is clicking, because somebody made a comment, um, you leave it clicking. You know how it's it clicks when it reaches the temperature that you 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 set it at. Just leave it. Okay. It's not exactly um, heat sensitive as much as our vegetables. Remember that vapor valve was to warn us that our vegetables we don't want to reach boiling point with that. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So this will stay at three hundred degrees, and you just let the valve click. Cool. There you go. So there goes our dump cake that's going happening <laughs> in the EOC, being baked in our EOC. All right. Any other questions so far? So if you're tuning in for the first time, I want to make mention again. Last week we did scampi, and the seasonings that we use for our scampi is pretty much the same that we're going to use today. But this time our meat. Protein is going to be our salmon. There you go. Okay. Our thawed salmon. So as promised, we're doing seafood for the whole month of August. Uh, hence your salmon filet. Okay, let me just put this away. Okay. Okay. And now we're going to move on to our um, salmon. So if you could see this, I set it again at 3.15 just now. Uh, earlier I had preheated it, but I guess it reset. Uh, um, and then my wife will give me instructions and I'll just uh, carry it out. Um, but I'll wait with you guys. If you're also preheating your EOC, uh, again, 3.15, if you're using a traditional oven, we put this in a baking dish, right? Mm -hmm. Is there somebody who's actually cooking with us? The traditional way. Yeah, yes. Please, sorry, who was that? Somebody said yes. Yes, we're going to do a traditional way for one of the fillets. Okay. So if you're using for the salmon fillet, if you're doing a traditional way, you're using the same 375 oven, right? Now, for the salmon fillet, if you're baking in the big oven, you have to put it in your oven. To 400 degrees. So if you do it together with a cake, what are you gonna do? We can't. Oh. This is the this is the the difficulty. If you are going to do both the traditional way with the use of your oven, you're gonna have to bake your cake first and let that finish before you can do your salmon because you'll be baking them at two different temperatures. Got it. You won't be able to do it at the same time. Okay. Okay. So. For the salmon this time, if you're doing it the traditional way, here's what we need to do. So get, grab your four salmon fillets, okay? And then- We had already thawed our fillets. Yeah, so it's completely thawed, right? You need to start this um, thawed. And then your garlic, grab two thirds of the garlic, okay? So how much garlic did we say we needed? Uh, two tablespoons. Okay. So just grab about two thirds of that. Okay. And what you want to do is completely dry your salmon first. Dry your salmon first, pat it dry, or if there's excess water, try to remove the excess water, okay? Because we don't want to dilute the seasoning that we're going to put on it. So pat it dry, remove the water. I'm thinking my friend T is probably going to use how many salmon fillets are you doing today, T? Eight? We're going to do eight. So four eight. in our ELC and then four in the oven. It's a feast. <laughs> okay, four in the EOC and four in the oven. So you will be able to do it two ways. That is cool. You'll be able to see the difference, huh? So what we want to do is dry up our salmon fillets first. And as soon as you've dried up your salmon fillets, you're going to do get two thirds of your minced garlic. And um, season. Right? And then two thirds of your parsley, okay? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you're using dry or fresh. 
two thirds of what you have right now. And you're going to rub that on each of your fillet, okay? Combination of your garlic and parsley and your salt and pepper to taste, okay? We never give you like an actual measurement for your salt and pepper because that is always the taste. I always tell people go easy on your salt and pepper because it's easier to add later. And it's hard, you can't tweak it if it ends up being really salty, okay? So a combination of the garlic and the parsley, rub it all over your salmon fillets with your desired amount of salt and pepper. Okay, so I'm gonna start. I don't know if you could see that, let's do it that way. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, both sides? Yes, uh. <laughs> rub it on both sides. So you're gonna really like, um, kind of like get your yeah, hands dirty. Get my hands dirty a little bit here. You just... cannot go, oh, I don't wanna to touch it. You can't. Um, I have to <laughs> you, do want it. It, you want it to get in. I have to do it by side. So uh, let me just do this one side first. Oh, you yeah, yeah, I will. Um, but I wanted it evened out before I even rub it in. Okay. Just two thirds, just use two thirds of your um, garlic and your parsley, okay? Because we have a use for the rest of that for later. Actually, I'm just gonna do it that way so it'll be more even. We could have used our butcher block. Yeah. And I could have used a bigger plate. <laughs> Let me grab that. That's okay, I'll hold it. I minced my garlic earlier, so this is freshly minced mm -hmm. garlic. It's so like good. well, one of you is trying to rub this on the your side. Yeah, two thirds. Yeah. Two thirds of your minced garlic and two thirds of your parsley. Make sure you leave one third of it. Okay. Okay. No, that's too much. That's too much. It's okay. Okay. Um, while somebody's doing that, if you're not done with your salmon and seasoning it with your garlic. Make sure with your asparagus spears that you remove the woodsy ends, okay? The woodsy ends. Okay. Perfect. Not a good idea. Okay, I guess it's just, it's just, just make sure that your garlic and your pepper, I'm oh, sorry, your salt and your pepper are really like. Yeah, we just, this is how, this whole thing is about making sure that the, all the flavorings from these are somehow being soaked. We're not marinating our salmon, but somehow that it's really getting soaked in. All right, I'm having fun here. Okay. Ready? All right, now we're gonna get a bowl. Excuse me. Okay. <laughs> so, so that you can see, that's what it looks like now. All right. All right. So in a bowl, what you're going to do is here, combine your butter. Okay. Three tablespoons, meaning whatever butter you have, because you're doubling up on your recipe to wonder, right? You have to use three fourths of that butter that you have. Combine it, your melted butter, three fourths of it, of what you have. In my case, it's going to be like um, six tablespoons of butter. Three, four, five, Six. My six tablespoonfuls of butter is the three fourths of my half cup. Okay. So whatever butter you have, because you double the size of yeah, three fourths of that of your butter, and then okay. three fourths of your lemon juice as well. Okay? okay. So the lemon juice, in my case, will be like three tablespoons. Okay. Hi to Wendy. Thanks for joining us. Hello.
right. Combine those two. And here we go. The combination with the salmon and the butter. Now, you're going to have to lay down your salmon on your preheated EOC. Okay, um, so directly, right? Mm -hmm. So no oil, Nothing. just straight up, okay? Yes, just lay it down. Make sure you leave some room for the asparagus because we're going to put the asparagus on one side of it, okay? So we need to make sure we have room. <laughs> So if this is, you're doing it in the other one, Tawanda, in the traditional oven, you're doing the same thing, except you're putting it in the oven on the baking dish, okay? Four, on one side, four salmon on one side. He's gonna cut up one of our salmon so it can fit. There you go. Okay, I wanna, I don't, there you go. Right. And then we're putting our asparagus on one side of it, okay? If it's a baking dish, then it's on the other side of your baking dish. Lay down the salmon on one side, then boom your left on the other side. That's where you put down your, your asparagus. We're going to make sure somehow that, can you please make sure? Yeah. On the side, okay? Just lay it down as much as you and can. And then we're just going to move it around later when we flip uh, the fillet. Or are we oh, gonna flip we're not going to flip this. Oh, we're not going to flip the fillets. That's awesome. There's <laughs> no flipping here. But I don't have to destroy my current setup. <laughs> okay. And then you grab the combination of the lemon juice and the butter, and then you drizzle it all over your salmon as evenly as you can. Drizzle all over the salmon and the asparagus spears. Mmm, all that goodness. All right. And then, you cover this, and you time this, okay, for 10 minutes. At 350, we're cooking, we're baking our salmon in the EOC at 350 degrees, for 10 minutes together with the asparagus. In your traditional oven, you are going to bake it in a baking dish at 400 degrees for 10 minutes. Okay, my phone is dying. Oh, okay. Can you give me that? Um, I have one. Okay, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. <coughs> Okay, sorry, we are having a little technical difficulty here. <laughs> so phones, we have phones that are dying. It's a good time to say hi to our friends. Okay, uh, if you see some, if you see someone responding to your messages, that's actually our daughter Francesca. So thanks, Francesca, for making everybody feel welcome. Uh, and our son is the one manning all the, the camera work here. Right. Okay. So in the traditional oven, after the 10 minutes, what I would suggest is um, put it up on boil after the 10 minutes, because at, at eight to 10 minutes, your salmon is actually done. But I would suggest do like a two minute broil in your traditional oven, because that will brown the top of your salmon. So at the tail end, right? Exactly, at the tail end. We're doing the same thing with the salmon in the EOC. I'm gonna just crank it a little bit after like eight minutes, okay? So that I can brown the top a little bit. Cool. So if you're using the traditional oven, do they put it on the top rack or the middle rack? Top. The top rack. If they're using, if they're making their um, dump cake. Middle or top. <laughs> Not the bottom, either the middle or the top. The thing about both of these, you want to brown the top. <laughs> so a lot of oven, like I mentioned last week, the coil is actually on top, right? And actually sometimes it's all over, but I've seen a lot more where it's on top. I'm not sure if that has something to do with the design. I'm not sure, okay? So 
Is everything good now? Everything's cooking. So what do you do with the remaining butter, parsley, garlic, and lemon juice? You grab another bowl and you simply put all of your remaining butter. Combine your remaining butter with the remaining lemon juice. And this time add the broth or chicken stock. Or white wine. Or white wine. Yeah, so we're using two tablespoons of white wine from our end. Okay, we decided to do white wine. And then our parsley, we just um, piece of all the fresh ones, you can do your dried parsley. We're gonna add our parsley and the remaining garlic. Okay, there you go, in goes everything. What is this for? You will actually serve this together with your salmon and asparagus later. So this will be like a dip for oh, your asparagus okay. and yeah. salmon later. There you go. It will be so good. You're gonna wanna drizzle this all over your salmon and asparagus. There you go. And you can set it aside. Please later. So, um, hey Mick, can you shift to the salmon really quick over here? I can show to them. Okay, oops, where's the camera? There you go. That's my dipping sauce. Thank you. I don't know if you would call it a dipping sauce. You're not necessarily going to dip your sovereign in asparagus, and you're going to drizzle it over, right? Like, say, additional flavoring for later. Okay? So. We have a lot of time on our hands, just waiting on everything to bake and to cook. So if you are uh, joining us on Zoom, feel free to chat with us. Um, you saw last week, a lot of people made the blueberry dump cake. Those pictures were so encouraging, guys, with the vanilla ice cream on, on top of it, vanilla ice cream on top of it. Uh, Celeste wants to extend her heartfelt thanks for all of you joining her in making the blueberry dump cake. We enjoyed ours as well. Mm -hmm. All right. So while we're waiting on all of these, I can smell the cake mm. and I can smell the salmon. Mm. It smells really good in here. Okay. So well, I want to make mention. In as much as you're starting to see us use the electric oil core skillet, to bake cakes in it. And then pretty soon you'll see us bake um, breads in it, like a banana bread. We're doing that one of these days. But I wanna tell you the difference, okay? Just especially for the owners, those of you who have an EOC, this is the difference. If you take a traditional recipe for a cake or a banana bread, okay? It doesn't matter what temperature setting it says to bake something on or in, okay? You always preheat your EOC somehow to 350 degrees. Then you put your cake batter afterwards, and then you always lower it to 300 degrees. So if your traditional cake recipe says, bake at 400 degrees for let's say um, 50 minutes, in the case of a banana bread, you will bake the banana bread batter in the same manner in your EOC at 300 degrees for the same amount of time, okay? That's how you convert your cake mix recipes so you can bake in your EOC. So it always saves you a little bit of energy, right? It saves you a little bit of energy. And then honestly, there are instances because it's like a much bigger surface. If your cake is going to turn out to be like a little bit thinner, you actually cut down on time by about five to 10 minutes, okay? Is there any questions so far? I have 18 more minutes um, on my black forest cake. Yay! And I have three more minutes in the OC for the salmon. So are you guys busy yet with back to school shopping? It's kind of strange here from our end because um, our kids have two different um, 
you know, start dates. Our son actually starts school on August 12th. So that's like, what, 10 days from now. But our daughter starts school in September. So everything is kind of like misaligned nowadays. Some schools are going ahead to meet in person. Some schools are going to start with online school and then later on transition to in-classroom meeting. For us, though, we've decided to be on the conservative side so both of our kids will have to do online schooling throughout the school year. How about you guys? So I hope that you guys are, you know, just rolling with the flow of, you know, how things are. Uh, COVID has really put a spin on everybody's lives. <laughs> but thankfully, we can still continue to enjoy time with the family, especially in the kitchen where we could cook together. We've really grown a lot in this area over the past four months. Yes. So you probably saw me grab the ice cream. I did say get ready with an ice cream or your vanilla ice cream or your whipped cream. So this time I remember to bring out my ice cream so I can thaw it a little bit. So it will be ready for our dump cake. There you go. Okay. So to wander in your traditional oven, how much more time do you have left? You have very little left, right? Like two minutes, three. Two minutes, just two. I would suggest putting it on broil for the last two minutes. Put it up to broil for the last two minutes. In the same way, I am going to open my skillet there for the last two minutes and cook it a little bit more that way so it can brown on top. I'm gonna add. Okay, so what we're doing is we cracked it open by about an inch and we added how many minutes? Just two. We added two more minutes because we want the top of our salmon to be- to brown a little bit. A little bit brown, okay? okay. So while waiting for this, uh, what are we cooking next week? You tell them. <laughs> so uh, we have finally decided that, okay, maybe we have um, pared down and simplified our recipe enough where we can actually share it with you guys. Next week, we're going to make seafood paella. Okay, seafood paella. Now, I know that you some people have allergies to certain seafood. So you decide what kind of seafood to use. The way we're gonna put it in our ingredient list is just buy a mixed bag of seafood, you know. The seafood medley, have you seen those? Um, um, Costco has them. I've seen it at Kroger, but it's this mix of seafood in one pack. They call it seafood medley. A lot of times it contains some mussels, the green mussels, some shrimps and scallops. Those are the traditional um, things that go in a pack. So okay. again, you know, if you have allergies to, to shell brought shellfish, then go ahead and just use uh, something else, right? Uh, that you can act, your body can actually adopt to. Now the, the recipe is flexible enough though. Let's just say you don't eat seafood at all. Go ahead and get some um, Spanish sausage or some chorizo. You could, you could definitely alternate the seafood protein with any other meat that your body is used to. Exactly. But guys, seven ingredients. So we will be able to make our seafood paella. That's exciting for me because traditionally when I prepare this, I use well, probably 15 or 16 ingredients. We've simplified it so we could share it with you guys. Then you can, of course, optionally add more ingredients as you get familiar with the recipe. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you join me next week. It's getting darker. I feel like it's the light is getting darker in here. But anyway. My salmon timer just went off. It's done. Hi, John. Ta-da. It looks so good. John, are you done? Are you late? How come I just saw you now? <laughs> oh, uh, I was here for like, I was late for like five minutes, but okay. um, I have one more minute for the salmon. Okay. okay. Yeah. Ours is done. I'm leaving it cracked open a little bit like that. I can smell it. It smells so good. Tawanda, is your salmon in your traditional oven done? Not yet, but we're getting there. So okay. we can let them see it, right? Okay, you want to take a quick look? Here we go. 
I wish we could move our, maybe we can move this camera over. Can you see it? I think they can see it. Can you all see it? Yeah, they can see it. Here we go. You can actually, we're going to play this sound line just so you can see it now, okay? Okay. I hope you get better at playing. Do we play it now or do we, we brown it a little bit? No, it's done. Okay. Um, the timer is off. What we can do is because the bottom of this is actually be so much more brown than the top. Okay. This is the difference between this and your traditional oven. In your traditional oven, the top is going to be a little bit more brown because you boiled it. Here, because it's touching the heat source on the bottom, the bottom is actually going to be a little bit more brown. So if you want to show the more brown <laughs> part of your salmon, you can simply flip it when you plate it. Here we go. Okay. You can do it this way, honey. You might um, just use this for the salmon. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to move my asparagus uh, stalks here a little bit. I'll probably grab a few of them. Okay. I had distributed the stalks all around because I was running out of real estate. Let's see. Can you tell I'm so excited about the ice cream and the blueberry dump cake? I'm preparing my scooper. <laughs> okay, so I'll just bring it closer to the camera. Or over here. You see it? Mikael can spotlight it here. So it looks really good. What a healthy dinner for your family. And yes, we can show it in the camera underneath this other skillet. So let's see. I never know how to estimate this thing. There you go, look. Baked salmon with asparagus. Um, for and then you can grab some of the stuff that's at the bottom. That's all the juice of the salmon mixed with the butter and your lemon. Okay, you want to taste it? John, are you done with your salmon? So we'll do the usual where we go around and show everybody's camera for those cooking mm -hmm. mm -hmm. done. We just add a little more time so we can browse. Right. Thank you, Mikhail. So we'll just uh and then this is, this is your extra extra sauce, right? That we made earlier. If you want some. It's time to taste our if you're wondering what else you can have, there's like a side. With this, um, you can have potato fingerlings, okay? Or those small potatoes that you bake, that's one of them. Mm -hmm. Or you can have it, if you're Filipino like us, <laughs> you can have it with rice. Or if you're on a diet, like John is so health conscious, <laughs> our Marine, then he will just most likely have this and eat a lot more asparagus with it. Yeah, yeah, yesterday we made, uh, I made some quinoa, some quinoa, and that will also go well with this. Uh, you know, it's very easy. One of these days we'll show it to you, but uh, we, we make quinoa, like crossover between just plain quinoa and a salad. So it's not as flavorful as a salad, but definitely goes well as a side dish for fish. Mm -hmm. Okay. What degrees was your ELC? What? What degrees was your ELC for the salmon? salmon. What temperature? Yes. Oh, it was at oh, 300. 300. No, no, the salmon was at 350 straight up. Oh, yeah, 350 all throughout. Sorry. 350 all throughout, mm. which is like 10 minutes all throughout. Like it's too long, right? It's like 10 minutes. You're going to have to be two, do two batches with your EOC if you want. But it, it's perfect. And, um, it's uh, You could taste the the lemon, and then the, obviously the garlic has a lot of flavor to it. And then if you want to add some more, then you can just do it. I think oh. I'm good without it okay. being added. Yeah. But yeah. Is anybody ready to taste their salmon? Let us know how yours turned out. 
So again, you know, salt and pepper to taste. So if you guys want it a little bit more peppery, or you could even add chili, uh, red chili flakes, right? Like it? Mm -hmm. mm. I love salmon. It's my favorite. That is so good. Hey, can you try yours? Whoever has some salmon done, let us know how you like this. Is everything okay, T? Mm. Yeah, uh, I just tried my salmon. It's pretty good. Okay, Mikael, can we please do um spotlight on John? I want to see his dish. Which one do you like better, John? This or the scampi last week? Uh, I mean, I haven't tried um scampi before, so I like I like tasting that. Oh, it was your first time to try scampi last week. Oh, but perfect. That was really good, though, the way you showed it to us as well. Mm -hmm. So I guess you bake this in a traditional oven. Yeah, mm -hmm. look at that. Whoa, because they, you have a big batch. Right? So mm -hmm. they have... Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Are you excited to eat? Yeah. It looks you really know, good. you should have your dad on camera. Hi. We need to have your dad be the Hi, taste Adam. Hello. Hello. Your queen John is cooking really well. Okay, mm -hmm. shout out to my friend Marjo. I know I don't never I don't ever mention your name, but hello. <laughs> yeah. All right. Are you almost done with your cake as well? Uh yeah, we have seven we have more minutes. Five minutes on our cake. Yeah, five yes. minutes on our cake. I'm gonna crank it open. Look. Oh wow. And we're just gonna leave it like that. Okay. For the remaining five minutes, I'm just gonna leave it open like that. Should we crank it up? The temperature. You don't have to. You don't have to. Okay. So I'm leaving at 300 degrees, but I'm opening it. Again, we used um, gluten-free uh, cake mix. So if you remember from last week, we did have to extend our cooking time by a little bit. Uh, while the all's blueberry dump cake were already browned on top, ours wasn't yet. So we added about seven minutes to that. Then it turned out just exactly like what you guys cake look like. So you'll see as well here that uh, our gluten-free mix is probably going to be a little more moist than usual, but we will just leave it there for a couple of minutes again, right? But I don't think we'll need to today. Okay. But anyway, um, T, may I see how your um, salmon turned out? Yes, we ready to show. Can you show to Wanda? And Ro, this is Ro, from what do you the our good friend Ro is a very good cook. So. <laughs> oh, there you go. And then I'll show you one. And Did the you ELC. broil it? Did you broil the one that you put in the oven? Um, not quite. Oh, but I did it on my. Can you see that one? Yeah, uh -huh. you can. Okay. Is that a 350 or a 300, rather? Or 350? Yeah, it was too high. It was 375. Yeah, we had 375. Uh, oh, the cake was, uh, yeah. The cake, was, the 375 was supposed to be for the cake in the traditional oven. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. What about the cake? Tea? Are you putting it at three? Make sure it's at 300, right? Yeah. It's not 375, okay? Cake's at 300. 300, the cake is at 300, yeah. And then now I have my lid open because I'm just waiting on the last few minutes with it. All right. So have you tried the salmon? Is this guy eating the salmon? This guy is our, our best bet. <laughs> she should be our judge. Does she eat fish? <laughs> she likes fish. She's playing with friends right now. <laughs> Bro, how is it? I'm curious to see how Rose, what does Rose think about it? The boo? How do you like the salmon? It's good. All of it's good. Mm. You have a little more toasted salmon. I saw the base there, but <laughs> it's gonna be good still. Toasted stock on the salad master um system, they don't really taste burnt. <laughs> they taste good. <laughs> Who else is here? Okay, hi to Milo Carcassona. Sir, how's that? And uh, Lynn Villemer or Ra, uh, 
Okay. Sorry, man. We knew you before you married Mr. Ora. So I still know you as Billy Amer. <laughs> Then we have two more minutes. There's two more. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Just decline. Hello guys, sorry about that. Really, really sorry about that. But uh, our um, black forest dump cake is done. And uh, we're about to show it to you. Okay. Grab a bowl. Okay. And um, we can use this. All right. Mikael, can you change the spotlight camera? There we go. Look at that. I'm so excited. <gasps> See all the gooey goodness? Wow. You guys done as well with your uh, black forest dump cake? Okay, so do I just scoop? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and then we'll add the ice cream on top. Ooh, look at that. I'm excited to eat, you guys. I'm excited to have dinner. So, it's a duck cake, so it's not supposed to retain any shape, but it will have all the gooey flavors of your cherry and your chocolate there. And the nuts. Okay, so there's my bowl. And then we're going to add... Um, oh, man. See, I'm not good with this ice cream scooping. We're going to add a scoop of ice cream. Oh, just a scoop. Or are we gonna do two scoops? One. Okay, so there's my first scoop. <laughs> yeah, this little dripping here destroyed my presentation. I'm gonna wipe it off. I don't know how to scoop ice cream. Can you tell? He, I think you should do it. All right, sorry about that. It needs some muscle. There you go. <laughs> there. Okay. All right. Ta-da! And, okay, so Mikael, we'll show it back in this other camera. There you go. So your ice cream popped black forest dump cake. And so exciting. And the truth is, obviously, there. is my wife, who is a dessert to dump cake. So let's turn back to the main mm. camera. There you go. It is so good. Oh man, with that butter. Hey, Tawanda, are you done with your cake? It is so good. Mm. So I bet Sky will like that cake. Mm. Yum. So which one do you like from today, Tawanda? Which bro? Mm, which like one this. do you like better? That is so good. The I black like forest so dump cake is so mm -hmm. good. And the pecans, my goodness. Mm -hmm. It is you so like good. It? You probably All just right. need a, a small bowl. <laughs> you like it? All good. Okay, yeah. thank you. That's great. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, where's um, John? John, 
Let me see your cake. Are you done with your cake? Mikael, can we please spotlight John? Uh, our cake just finished. Uh, oh. Yeah, here it is. Is it done with your cake? Oh, uh, there, it's done. So did you just, use yeah. walnuts? What did you use? Pecans or almond? Uh, honestly, I don't even know, but. <laughs> <laughs> your assistant did it for you, huh? It's good. Uh, so yeah, it's, it really looks like that, John. It looks like it's, it's bubbling and there's enough chocolate and butter all over. But, but it's so uh, good. It's so good once you put it in a bowl and then add your ice cream. Ooh, Our so whipped cream. Good. Our whipped cream. So there you have it, guys. Uh, we um, just uh, showed to you a very simple way of preparing um, baked salmon with asparagus and, um, you know, a dessert to go along with that. I hope you enjoy your Sunday dinner. Thanks again, as always, for, for joining us. And we have a few announcements before we log off. Yes, so, sorry. I'm enjoying the dessert really good. It is so good. To wind up, so which do you like better, this black forest or the blueberry dump cake? Oh, definitely the black forest. <laughs> right? <laughs> you want to show us your black forest? Let me see your black forest. There, there you go. Looks nice too. Yeah. The two corners are eaten out because we've been testing it. <laughs> it is really good, right? Mm -hmm. It is so good. I know, right? So anyway, so there you go. We did a back-to-back -back, um, version of the same ingredients and the same concept as far as baking. So last week we did scampi shrimp. Okay. Um, with the same ingredients that we use for our salmon today. That is to show you the many different ways that you can cook with the same seasonings that you use for one thing. They don't necessarily have to be limited to one dish, okay, or to one protein. The whole point is we wanted to show you that it can be versatile. And same with the concept of the dump cake. Exactly. Basically, you can mix and match now. Whatever fruit you want, whatever cake mix you want, it's the same principle. And then cover it with sliced butter. Same concept. Same, same. Exactly. Okay. So thank you so much, as always, for joining us. Um, I personally look forward to Sunday um, evenings just being able to cook with you all. It gets a little bit stressful. I was really stressed today but anyway i'm so glad you all can join us and i'm looking forward to seeing you all again next sunday um i'll try to get the invite out as soon as possible but like he mentioned earlier if you didn't hear we're going to share with you our simplified version of seafood paella why because in a lot of our food conversations recently paella seafood keeps coming up <laughs> so we said you know what we need to just share this and cook people cook, cook people cook this with people all right so that's what we're doing next week and guess what we're having for dessert we're going to bake some very healthy chocolate cake with an icing that's made with avocado hmm. okay so our cake next week will be incredibly healthy Please tune in for that. We can't wait to cook with you once again. Bon appetit, John. Enjoy your meal. And as always, please um, send your photos, okay? And put it on our page. We would love to see how you guys are enjoying these meals. Thank you, everyone. Have Thanks, a great everyone. Weekend. Have a great Sunday evening. Bye.